with Corbin Carroll riding the struggle bus. Are we regretting spending that first round pick on him? Matt and I are answering that and more on today's action-packed episode of Locked On Fantasy Baseball. You are Locked On Fantasy Baseball, your daily fantasy baseball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, fantasy baseball fanatics, and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, we're your number one source of fantasy baseball knowledge, and thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. I'm your host, Dominic Martino. You can find me on Twitter at Don Martino FB. Here, as always, with my brother, my co-host, my partner in crime, Matthew Ane, and you can find him on Twitter at Matthew underscore Ane. If you're listening on a platform like Apple or Spotify that allows five-star ratings and reviews, we would truly, truly appreciate it if you could do that for us and if you're watching on youtube and you haven't already hit the little bell below it subscribes to the channel and gives you notification every time we drop a new episode and lastly and but most importantly to matt and i guys join us on the subtext platform the link to our subtext is in the bio wherever you're watching or listening and on all of our social media platforms on subtext we give uh in-depth personalized experience you get text message alerts right to your phone with prospect call-ups injury updates and just a lot more than we can offer on this 30 minute podcast but guys uh is it time to press the panic button uh we're, we're bringing back Wario Meter Wednesdays. We're in the moving groove of things here in the regular season. And Matt, are we panicking? What's going on, brother? Ah, uh, I mean, there is a few that I might want to hit the panic button soon. But uh, this first one, I'm going to rest assure everybody that we're okay. And that's Corbin Carroll. I mean, here's the thing. You know, guy's awesome. He can't be awesome all the time. I mean, he's not the Dulcecki guy. But, you know. <laughs> that's I a don't... deep cut. That's a deep cut. You know, like I don't when I, I don't always hit baseballs, but when I do, it goes over the fence. Like, no, it doesn't work like that in real life, unfortunately. So, like Corbin Carroll's just getting off to a slow start. So, like, yeah, like I mean, there's some good good things too. I mean, it's not all bad for Corbin Carroll. Like, he has six walks to one strikeout. He's just batting 176 right now. Like, it is what it is. Like Corbin Carroll, I have no doubt in my mind. It isn't even like my hands even hovering the button at this point. With Corbin Carroll, he's going to be just fine. He's still doing this in three weeks. Like then, then we're going full send alarm and like, oh my god. But if you got anybody panicking in your league, I would definitely send like a a horrendous offer out there and see what you can get. Like straight up, like I don't know, somebody the round like round two or three. If you really want to be a bozo and just you know poke the bear a little bit just to rub it in their face, like here's Royce Lewis. I don't know, he looked great in that half start. You know, I'm just kidding. I'm being I'm just being, you know, I can't say the word I want to say on. on, Yeah, Matt's excited today. Matt's excited today. I love it. I'm here for it. uh, Yeah, but I mean, ultimately, like, yo, guys, like, do not even sweat this dude. But yeah, I mean, if if you catch somebody panicking, please try and try and snag him on the cheap because, you know, it's definitely worth it, especially in those redrafts. Yeah, this is just the best time to take advantage of, you know, your your league mates and, you know, catch you know those deals uh you know when guys like you know corbin carroll the numbers don't look good but as i mentioned when you dive a little bit deeper everything actually looks fantastic the underlying numbers look great corbin carroll is going to be a first round value you know um i don't know about maybe not the top five that we were taking him as but definitely first round value i really love corbin carroll i think he's gonna have a monster season he's still only 24 years old uh we ha- i don't even think we've seen the peak yet uh let's move on to um somebody else that you know i'm not really worried about you know uh let's talk about Jordan alvarez Off to a slow start this season. I believe he's two for 20 so far, uh, batting um, 100. Uh, You know, just riding the struggle bus a little bit. But you know what? You you look a little bit deeper, three walks to three strikeouts. It's a guy, you know, the underlying stuff looks good. I'm I'm not really worried about him. You know, Alvarez is only 27 years old in the prime of his career. The injury bug, you know, he's been bitten by it a couple of times in his career. But, you know, I don't really project that into anybody unless you're, you're, you're Royce Lewis. Or or Byron Buxton or Alberto Mondesi, but um I, I love Jordan. He's in the middle of that great lineup. Just buy low, just buy low where you can on a lot of these guys. You know, some we might be legit worried about, but these first two are pretty safe so far. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, you got to look at it like this: Jordan Alvarez is already has one step in the right direction, right, Dom? He's not hurt. Yeah, so there you go, there you go. <laughs> you know, 
you, you just gotta pretty much just you know take your take your thing and just know that like yo he's gonna be just fine like it it, it is what it is so like Jordan is just gonna do Jordan things very shortly it's just a matter of when he's gonna explode on you know just gotta pray he doesn't get hurt first at least he can give you one game I'm kidding now again I'm very 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 jokely today um but let's move on let's talk about Francisco Lindor uh you know I look at Lindor and you go okay well he didn't have a great spring okay not starting off hot either and where i'm really at with like in terms of like worrying not really i mean the dude has a long track record of just being fantastic last season was a phenomenal year and he's only 31 like i don't foresee there being a true like drop off there's nothing that screams even in the advanced stats of like slower bat speed or anything of the sort like francisco lindor looks fine it just he hasn't been able to put the bat to the ball and actually show you that yet. It's going to happen soon. It, it might even happen as early as tomorrow when you guys are listening to this. And he just goes, boom, hey, guys, I'm here. And this could be a mute point. So, like, Lindor is just somebody that, like, do not sweat, do not worry. You know, everything is looking A-OK. You know, just, you know, if anything, again, try and buy low. I, I need a shortstop. I'm probably going to be doing that before this podcast airs. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, another one, you know, I'm not really too worried about Lindor. He's a notoriously uh, slow starter. If you look at his career uh, during April and March, he's a uh, career 249 hitter during those months. Uh, Lowest home run total out of any months in his career. Lowest stolen base total out of any months in his career. So with somebody with Lindor, we know the track record. We've seen it before. Uh, Not really too worried about Lindor. The Mets team, on the other hand, uh, you know, they they need to pick it up. They need to catch up, uh, you know, to my Yankees or our our Yankees. I got to include my brother Matt over there. He actually got the Yankee fitted on um, if if you're not watching on YouTube. But, um, yeah, uh, another guy just really not too worried about. But let's move on to somebody who there might be a little bit more worry about here. Let's talk about Nolan Arenado real quick before we jump into um, a quick ad after that. But with Nolan, he's getting a little bit older, you know, had a down year last year, age 33 season. Uh, somebody who, you know, as you look into the underlying stuff, doesn't look as good as some of the other guys we were talking about before, hasn't actually walked yet through the first five games, uh, only has three hits through 21 at-bats, which is good for a 143 batting average. Uh, Nolan Arenado only hit 266 last year with 26 bombs. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, the down season. Uh, I'm probably at about like a three right now with Nolan. You know, I'm not too worried. And especially with like a guy like Josh Young going down, you know, third base is starting to look a little bit more grim. So um, not super worried at the moment. Kind of want to see how the next month or so goes. If the numbers still are looking great and the underlying stuff still isn't looking great. I might, might be looking to, you know, get out from under Nolan Arenado. Yeah. I mean, like he is somebody that's on the Oreo meter. You know, he was dealing with that back spasms and whatnot. Uh, and it looked like it was lingering into this year a little bit. Something that just worries me long term with Nolan Arenado. And maybe he's maybe it is bothering him, but he's playing through injury and it can explain a lot of this. You know, a few things can happen. I also own him in a few teams too. So this is just wonderful. Uh, you know, with Nolan, you just gotta look at it like this. You dr- you didn't have to pay what you normally pay for him. So you take you take your lumps where it is and you kind of just say, okay. When he's healthy, he's going to be fantastic. When he's not, he's not. And I think this is a product of not, and I think there might be an IL stint coming. So in terms of Wario meter, we actually haven't given an ounce of one yet. I'm at like a three and a half, slowly churning to a four. If he's still playing like this by Monday, I'm going to say, hey, we really have something to worry about. Uh, and it might be moving up to about a five because then I'm waiting to hear about the IL because it's the only thing that can explain his poor play. So, Yeah. No, hey, man, real Arenado, quick, not for me. I wanted to say one more thing on Arenado. No homers this spring, five walks to 15 strikeouts, 234 batting average. I know we don't really want to throw too much in this spring, but I just doesn't look that's not very Nolan Arenado esque of you yeah. know him. No, I, I completely agree. I mean, there's just a there, there's too much evidence already that is just saying that hey, we might see a down year or at least a really slow start. And like I said, when you start hearing back spasms, you start you start thinking, okay, is this really playing it a part? And I hate talking in circle, but a lot of it can do it. it it's just your back's your main part, part of your body. So once you start having issues with that, a lot of things fail. But all right, instead of me talking about a back and saying it nine times, because if you turned it into a drinking game, you'd probably already be drunk. So, uh, you know, 
Let's get into it. We got a whole bunch of other names that we, you probably should or should not be worried about. You'll wait and find out for that right after this. And guys, we are talking prize picks. Prize picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more or less than two to six players on stat projections and you watch the winnings roll in. Exploring my skills on prize picks this season adds an extra layer of excitement to daily fantasy sports. With just a few taps, you can transform $10 into $1,000 in ease with ease. Prize picks is incredibly user friendly. You can make your selections and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. And as the host of Locked On Fantasy Baseball, I got some rock solid picks for you. Offer for Jesus Lazardo to have higher than 1.5 walks as his next start, which you know he loves to walk, guys. Offer for Zach Geloff to have higher than 0.5 ribbies in his next outing. And offer Julio Rodriguez to have higher than 0.5 runs in his next game. Download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use the code Locked On MLB for first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. And are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN or or TV all day? and you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 streaming sports streaming channel uh, program uh, for every day, for you every day, bringing you biggest stories without screaming and all that nonsense. Locked On Sports today bringing, bringing you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or free on Amazon Fire TV channel app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And guys, Introducing the Locked On Fantasy Baseball Podcast Diamond Club on Subtext, your ultimate fantasy baseball companion. Dive into this season, uh, you know, as the season unfolds and rely on our dynamic content. Get real-time alerts right to your phone, including waiver wire rankings, instant call-up notifications, injury reactions, and a whole lot more. Stay ahead of your fantasy leagues by joining the Diamond Club on Subtext, where your path to victory begins. Subscribe now. Elevate that fantasy baseball experience to new levels and guys the bonus of this is after this episode you probably have guys that are on your roster right now that you're wondering where our worry meters at and if you're on the subtext you can actually ask us where we're at on that so you might want to join and check us out there so we can expand on that worry meter all you like just by joining the subtext but all right dom I love talking in circles. It's like my new <laughs> thing on this podcast. Please, please, please let me shut up here. Just move on. Let me, let me, uh, let's go. Yeah, to brother, you're, being, you're being a little too tough on yourself, man. You know, we, we all love you around here and, uh, that, that's, that's one thing that's for certain, but let's talk about some James Outman, right? James Outman's an interesting one. Uh, he actually had a really good spring. I, I was starting to, you know, build back up on him. Uh, after having like a pretty solid, you know, rookie campaign last year, he played uh, James Allen played 151 games, uh, 483 at bats, 86 runs, 16 doubles, three triples, 23 homers, 70 RBIs, 16 steals, 68 walks to 181 strikeouts, which is uh, not, not too great. A 248 batting average. And I saw the spring where, you know, Outman was hitting 294, two homers, three steals. Just looking really good, and you know he's on the struggle bus so far. You know, um, uh, this season uh, with only two hits through twenty-one at bats, uh, three RBIs, no steals, no homers, four walks, seven strikeouts. I do like that for you know Outman, somebody who strikes out you know a decent amount in his career, showing a little bit of plate discipline there. The underlying stuff looks pretty decent for him. I think this is a guy that you can go out there and get for nothing right now. You can go out there and probably pay absolutely nothing for James Outman. He might have even wound up on some, you know, waiver wires. I was actually looking into what his ownership percentage is. It's 85% at the moment. So check your waiver wires. You know, if, uh, you know, you just want to throw out something small, little offer for maybe a starting pitcher at the end of your bench who's overperformed a little bit, uh, you know, maybe a closer, you know, who's got a couple of saves if you can spare one. I don't know if you can. I don't know if anyone can actually spare a closer at the moment. So I might actually take that back. But, um, yeah, this is a little starting pitcher. You know, there's been a couple of guys overperformed. And, you know, uh, got yourself a little James Outman. He's on a Dodgers team. We're going to the counting stats. Looked really good last year. I think they could look even better this year. A little power speed. I like me some James Outman. Not really worried. If I had to throw a number, uh, maybe a one on the Wario meter. I, I don't even know if I'm going that far because, I mean, his spring was fantastic. And, again, we don't yeah. read too much in the spring. But when somebody performs and then comes into the, you know, the season with that, 
like, you know, you kind of got to take a few things into factor too, especially with the Dodgers and, and the Padres, you know, they did have to go all the way to Korea to go play a game. And they weren't, that was a little too early for them. Then they had a pretty much a couple days off and then a couple more days off after just to get home. So like, I feel like Outman kind of like broke that little hot streak that he was building up in, in spring. And it might take him a few, few, like a week or two to get back on there. So like Dom said, great buy low candidate right now, but also too, I think he's just going to bounce back really great. So I wouldn't move him if you own him. And I definitely would try to acquire him. So Outman, somebody I really like this year. Uh, don't have any any worries at all. He's about a zero for me. But let's move on to somebody that's a little bit more crucial and somebody that you may be scared of because of last year. That's Nolan uh, Aaron Nola. I don't know why I was about to say Nolan Arenado again. But um, Aaron Nola just is off to a slow start this year. And, you know, for no rhyme or reason, he's just not doing his thing but yet you know i look at you look at his spring and again i i it's the only kind of reference i have as a baseline for this season right where like he, there's been more innings pitched in spring than there has in the actual season for him so this is kind of what i have to look at and you know he just had a rough outing but i watched the whole start so like that's the thing like i live in philly that was what was on tv on on uh nbc sports so like that was what was on i was with a bunch of people nolan just had a really bad inning after that, he still rolled out for three more innings and was just fine. Looked like a tick of himself. The velo's fine. Uh, you know, the whiff percentage, which is still a small amount, is pretty much on par. Like, there's nothing that screams, oh, my God, Aaron Nola is going to just flop right now. And we're, we're be- it's the beginning of the end. Like, I don't think we're at doomsday levels with Aaron Nola or even a step back. I think it was just the first outing. And it was the Braves of all teams, too. And Ozzy Albies just seems locked in. So, like, I'm, I'm more con- – I would like to see more of what he's going to do when he goes out against the Reds if he goes through this rotation or if he's going to play more towards the weekend, which won't be the Reds. Uh, I don't know that matchup off the top, but, like, I think he'll perform better against them, not the best team in baseball. Uh, you know, that's kind of just how you got to look at it and kind of just take that outing with a grain of salt, especially, you know, just coming fresh out the gate of the, the opening of the season, especially at home, too. Like, Citizen Bank Park isn't the best pitcher's park. But something he's been a place where he's been successful in the past. But I mean, when you're going up against that lineup, it's pretty hard to be successful. Period. Yeah, man. He actually gets the Nationals. Nola lines up against the Nationals in his next outing. Bounce so that's a, that's that's a juicy one. I will say this: I I don't like I, we know who our Nola is, right? Like, I mean, should we be worried about somebody if we kind of know who they are? I'm going to give you Nola's numbers for the last four seasons combined. So it's 97 starts for Nola over the last four seasons, 32 wins, 32 losses, 416 ERA, 583 innings, 663 strikeouts, and a 109 whip. So that's pretty much what you're going to get from Nola, you know, probably a higher ERA, uh, big strikeout numbers. And as Matt mentioned, you know, it's usually just one big inning from Nola. It's usually one, you know, bases loaded, home run, grand slam inning, and then the rest of the game he's rock solid. So you can expect a good whip from a guy like Nola if it's just going to be one big inning and then he cruises the rest of the way. So the whip's going to be pretty good. Uh, Matt, chime on in, brother. Looks like you're chomping at the bit. Get in there. I also got one more great stat for Aaron Nola. Yeah. It, it's the other year. It's time. It's time to have a close to Cy Young year. And, you know, it's not always pretty, but when it does click, it's going to click and it's going to click hard. He's a tinker and he tinked. He tinked all the way down to the end of the season where he had to change, you know, make changes to his whole release and body motion because something wasn't working for him. And then it clicked. So Aaron Nola, I think, is going to, has fixed it again best team in baseball he went outing and plus what i like about the phillies organization too is they utilize ai a lot they fix Trey turner swing they fix wheeler's release and they fix nola nola's release and stance at the end of the season so whatever went wrong in that first outing they're going to make sure to you know run it through the algorithms and and fix his lineup uh but yeah i'm done talking and no i'm not like a philly lover but i am a nola fan especially this year being that it's another year so Anyway, guys, we have one more break, and we got a bunch of good names, a bunch of pitches that we're going to go over that I'm sure you have burning questions about of should we be worried or not. Stick around for that right after this. And, guys, we're talking about the Game Time app. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. That's why you need to check out the Game Time app. 
Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Using the Game Time app is super rewarding with flash deals and last minute tickets. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Images and views from the exact seats you'll be sitting in. Load their lowest price guarantee and event cancellation protection. And guess what? They have their all-in prices shown up front in your total so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets and their lowest prices always guaranteed. All right, so let's jump back in here. I I did want to say one last little comment on Nola before we uh, move into this next guy. Uh, he probably I, I don't know. If, like my whole thing is I don't know if I can be worried about somebody that I feel like I know who they are, but he would be the highest on my my um my my worry meter. I would honestly um uh give him like a, maybe like a four four and a half. Kind of want to see where the next couple of um you know, uh, things go with the next couple of starts go with Nola because uh, I don't know, man, it's just a little risky for me with him, but let's move on to our next guy. Let's talk about Max Freed. Max Freed. I feel like is somebody I'm kind of on the other end of the spectrum, uh, where Nola is. I'm not really worried about Freed at all. To be honest, another guy just not really worried about at the moment. Uh, didn't really pitch too much last year. Freed only threw 77 innings, uh, last season, you know, had the injury bug, you know, sneak up on him, but he's been good as whole career you know it's not like the stuff has changed or you know dissipated at all uh freeze 30 years old you know right you know uh, right coming out of that prime of his career but i think he's still gonna be a really really good starting pitcher uh career 306 era across 710 innings right under that caper nine uh a 116 career whip i think he'll he'll be right around those numbers again this year and he'll get he'll rack up a lot of wins for that braves team honestly probably about a one for a max freed i think he's gonna be really good this year yeah i mean he didn't look great. He didn't even make it out of the inning in the first inning. And I get it. It's the Phillies. And it's just one of those things. It's a bad outing. I don't, I don't think I have to worry, put out, put the push, push the, the worry meter at all. But, you know, I, I will say I'm, I'm leaning to it a little bit with his, just his track, track history of not being on the field for starters and to, you know, just, that outing in general just wasn't pretty. Even his defense, dude looked like he almost blew his Achilles up trying to save something uh, and went down pretty hard. But anyway, like Freed is just like, eh, we'll see. I don't know. There's one thing about Atlanta. Their bats are fantastic, but their arms are questionable outside of Strider, in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, let's keep moving, though. I want to talk about Bailey over. Probably the biggest heartbreak to my week and honestly the – um, the lit bag of dog poo on my front step because he finished the game with a 54 ERA. It was just absolutely ugly. And here's the thing, though. I don't think I'm worried about him either. Bailey Ober, I just think, had a bad start. I mean, what are you going to say? Like, hey, man, like, you know, you're not allowed to have those. I mean, I wish I could tell my pitchers that. I could, <laughs> you know, but unfortunately, that's just not a thing. You know, he just got lit up for a big game. The other thing that just isn't very promising is he had a bad spring too. But, you know, Bailey Ober is just one of those guys that right now kind of fell and was a more of a value in a lot of places. So he didn't kill you too much. He's like your pitcher four, five on a lot of teams. So like it'll hurt, but it's not going to hurt you too bad. I like Bailey Ober this year. I'm not out on him yet, but the Wario Beaner is probably about a three for me. And We'll see. I think that's a fair worry for now. And I have a feeling his next start, he's going to end up making it, making me even regret even saying there was a three. I think Bailey over is going to be just fine. Yeah, same, Matt. Not super worried about Bailey Ober, you know, at this point. Uh, he's, you know, he's shown, you know, very good results so far through his young career. You know, the last 
two seasons have been very successful. You know, one bad start doesn't mean anything right now. The what you know, a lot of you know people like to say is if you had a start like this, you know, um, from you know Ober in July, you know, of last year, where you had a you know a season with a three four three all right, it's not really moving the needle a crazy crazy amount either way. Uh, so I think Bailey Ober is going to bounce back. I think he's going to be very very good. Uh, one thing with Bailey Ober, he's he throws his fastball a lot for a guy who doesn't have like an awesome fastball. He only really sits around ninety one with that fastball and he throws it almost. 50% of the time. So that's one thing that I, I do have that does spring a little concern for me, but I'm not crazy concerned. I'd give him probably a two for, for Bailey Ober. Uh, let's keep things pushing here to somebody. I actually, I'm probably a little bit more concerned with, and it's Mitch Keller. Mitch Keller is a very Jekyll and Hyde type starting pitcher where, you know, last season he came out and was was absolutely dominant. The first, I want to say, three, four months before the All-Star break was one of the best pitchers. And then, you know, somehow still finished the season with a 4-2-1 ERA and a, a 1-2-5 whip, which is, you know, uh, honestly less than mediocre, you know, starting pitcher, according to me. So, you know, when I see Mitch Keller has, you know, come out and, you know, was started off pretty bad, honestly, I put him at about like a five. And actually, maybe he's the highest guy that I'm going to talk about today. You know, I'm throwing a number out at Mitch Keller, somebody who has the talent, just not the consistency, uh, still only 28 years old where, you know, there's potential for him to figure it out. But I'm not relying on it. I'm not banking on it. I'm not, you know, betting the house on it. Mitch Keller, you had a five on the Oreo meter for me today, man. Yeah, I mean, here's the th- here's the thing about Mitch Keller. I think he's Dylan Cease, where you know he's gonna have that high threes to low fours ERA with a boatload of strikeouts. But the 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 benefit of now Mitch Keller is he's behind a decent Pittsburgh Pirates team, where they might win games, so he might actually be able to contribute in more than just like the K's category and get you some wins. I like Mitch Keller this year, and I mean, if you were expecting him to, you know take that step forward and go to that like mid threes ERA and have keep the, keep the K mentality and, you know, keep the whip down, which that's never been the case with it. Then. Yeah. I think you were a little too high on Mitch Keller and the hype has gone too far. I think that right now, this is pretty much where he is. And luckily he is just, he wasn't a real high draft price. Um, I don't know his ADP off the top of my head, but yeah, I still it wasn't think- crazy. high. Yeah. Yeah, it was still like a pitcher 60 or 70. So, like, it is what it is. This is what you're getting from a pitcher 60. Honestly, you could drop him tomorrow and I won't even be worried. But, I mean, I think there's still more good times to come. So, I'm going to hang on to him right now. I'm not going to overreact. And on that off chance that he does turn around, hey, I got him. But, yeah, I'm also not saying run out and pick him up if he's available either. But, anyway, I'm going to move on. We're going to talk about Ryan Pepio so I can squeeze him in before the end of the se- end of the episode here. Pep just... uh. Pep had a bad outing, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, you know, he had a 9-5-3 ERA, made it about five innings, gave up about four hits, six runs, and one home run. And, yeah, just real, real, real bad. Real bad. Even a 1-4 whip. So here's the thing. It's Ryan Pepio, and he's on the, he's on the Tampa Bay race. Uh, the way I'm looking at it, he's probably about a three and a half. And the reason being is maybe the, the move is affecting him, but I didn't expect it because he's a young pitcher with probably not a lot of roots and somebody that's probably eager to get in there and probably more of a student of the game. So I kind of gave him the young discount versus a seasoned vet that's been in the league for a bit. So with Pep, um, I'm kind of more on like that 3.5 rolling out the four, especially since his draft price was a tad bit higher than a few of these guys. And Somebody who was really kind of ha- counting on. So, Pepio, man, four, I think. I think that's where I'm at. Yeah, Pepio is an interesting one because, you know, the problem in the minors for him, you know, was always his control. He always gave up too many walks, had too many guys on base. And then, you know, when he came up to the bigs last year, it looks like he figured it out. Last year, um, Pepio pitched 42 innings in the bigs, only walked five, you know, guys throughout that time. And then this year's first start, Pepio comes out, you know, pitches 5.2 innings and he walked four. So, you know, that's like almost 40 more innings, 35 more innings. And, you know, 
was one walk short of his, you know, 42 innings last season. So he needs to keep guys off base. And if he continues to walk guys and hasn't config- figured out that control, then, you know, I'm going to back away. Maybe it's a drop at that point, but I'm holding Pepio for now, you know, has shown some very bright, uh, very big, bright spots so far in his big league career. I think he still deserves the chance. So don't drop him yet. Uh, but guys, with that being said, that's all for today. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, rate, and review. Also, thank you to our everyday as a new listeners for making Locked On Fantasy Baseball your first listen each and every day. So, guys, until tomorrow, see ya. Peace.